In the mood for some yuck yucks? <laughs> or perhaps a gaggle of giggles? Look no further because we've compiled the 10 best comedies ever made. It doesn't even have a first name, it just says McLovin! Given that this genre of cinema has been around practically since the birth of moving pictures, this was a particularly challenging list to wrangle. Many IGN editors cast their votes for this one, with the idea also that this would be a balanced showcase. Is there a world where this list could have had five Mel Brooks films on it? The flamethrower! <laughs> that kids love this. Of course. Multiple Will Ferrells? Ha! 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 Absolutely. More than one Mike Myers movie? What? You're damn right. Mm, kinda. But in order to spread the love, we aim to select the best from some of these comedy legends while also pulling from as many decades as we could. What you'll find here are comedies that have stood the test of time. Damn! Ones we can safely call the best comedies of all time. Also, some of these movies are so danged important we can forgive their dated qualities, while others are relatively new but seem destined to go down as among the most hilarious motion pictures ever made. <laughs> But no matter what kind of sense of humor you have, you're bound to find these films full of thigh slappers. We've got spoofs, goofs, Alrighty then. road trips, head trips, aliens, zombies, and hold it there. ghosts, vampires, and a whole heck of a lot of pratfalls ahead of us. So let's get started. This is our list of the 10 best comedies of all time. So what do you call this? Well, this piece is called uh, Lick My Love Pump. Rob Reiner pretty much invented the mockumentary comedy genre with This Is Spinal Tap, a fake doc about aging British heavy metal musicians who aren't nearly as hardcore as they think they are. Never heard that one. No, uh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. How loud is their music? Their volume knobs go to 11. Never mind how little sense that makes, and never mind that each of their drummers has died under mysterious circumstances. He died in a bizarre gardening accident. Or that time they got lost backstage, or the unthinkable Stonehenge incident. Are you telling me that this is it? There aren't many losers more lovable than Spinal Tap, and their music is surprisingly good too. I'm gonna just shut my eyes for a bit. Go on. A movie for fans, about fans, Galaxy Quest was, during an era when Star Trek was re-entering some lean times, the best Trek movie around. And a super funny one at that. That was a hell of a thing. Following the aging cast of a once beloved sci-fi series who accidentally get caught up in a real space adventure with aliens who think they're actually heroes. You are our last hope. The film had a killer premise, clever execution, and a crowd-pleasing story. Never surrender. Starring Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, Alan Rickman, Tony Shalhoub, Daryl Mitchell, and Sam Rockwell in a wonderful red shirt in-joke role, Galaxy Quest is comedy gold, and a rousing inspirational one at that. Rule number one, no touching of the hair or face. Of course. And that's it! Now let's do this! Lots of movies are silly. But the silliness in Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy, is superlative. It's made with bits of real panther. Brian, I'm going to be honest with you, that smells like pure gasoline. Adam McKay's film ladles complete absurdist humor on an already very effective comedy storyline about a sexist newsroom adapting to the newly shattered glass ceiling and making complete rear ends of themselves in the process. Oh, oh. Oh, it's a deep burn! Oh, it's so deep! Will Ferrell and his news team are delightful buffoons, and Christina Applegate matches them all as a serious newswoman who's also funny as funny can be. It smells like... like a used diaper filled with Indian food! Anchorman is the kind of dumb comedy that makes you feel smart for loving it. Give my creation! Mel Brooks mercilessly sends up the Frankenstein franchise with his Oscar-nominated comedy classic. All right, I think I have it figured out now. The film stars Gene Wilder as the son of the mad scientist Dr. Frankenstein. It's pronounced Frankenstein. That's Frankenstein. Who follows in his father's footsteps and creates a monster of his own. It's alive! Brooks expertly recreates the eerie atmosphere of the Universal Horror Classics, which makes even the silliest gags seem extra funny by contrast. Get me out. Let me out of here. Get me the hell out of here. Every performance is a comedy all-timer, and the putting on the Ritz musical number is one for the ages. Young Frankenstein never stops making you laugh, no matter how many times you watch it. Wait, wait let, me, let me explain something to you. Um, 
I am not Mr. Lebowski. You're Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude. What if someone made a rich and complicated film noir and nobody told the protagonist? The Big Lebowski stars Jeff Bridges as Jeff Lebowski, aka the dude. Duder or uh, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. He's a laid back bowler who accidentally gets sucked into a world of kidnapping and conspiracy, and watching him cluelessly shamble in his bathrobe through situations worthy of a Raymond Chandler novel is a joke that never, ever gets old. I dig your style too, man. Got a whole cowboy thing going. Throw in a scene-stealing, rage-fueled performance by John Goodman as the dude's best friend Walter, and all you can do is abide. I want to ask you something. So you want to talk for more than a second? Yeah. I'm... What is it then? You think like a couple minutes? No, yeah, at most say like three minutes. Fine. The summer camp genre gets a welcome and gut-busting shot in the arm with Wet Hot American Summer, David Wayne's inspired, star-studded parody of the oft-derided genre. A group of teenagers, all played by actors who are way too old for this. Is that how everybody feels? Yeah. yeah. Pretty fine find themselves in a series of wild misadventures. And then, there's also somehow a talking can of vegetables. I mean, you clearly said smear mud on my ass. The wacky stuff is unrepentantly absurd, the serious moments cannot possibly be taken seriously, and the complete deconstruction of what would have been any other film's centerpiece, a baseball game against anonymously evil rival campers, is a masterfully constructed joke if there ever was one. It says here, name danger powers. No, 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 no. Danger's my middle name. Skewing a particular swinging London English era and particular 60s spy genre <laughs> that no one knew needed a good kick in the trousers, Austin Powers was a stupendously silly niche offering that blew up into a huge comedy franchise, with quotes that were absolutely inescapable for a good 20 years. Yeah, baby! <laughs> SNL and Wayne's World alum Mike Myers doubled his 90s gold rush with both rambunctiously and inappropriately promiscuous secret agent Austin Powers and his Lorne Michaels evoking nemesis Dr. Evil. One million dollars. The first Powers entry, which was the most modestly budgeted, is the best of the trilogy, becoming a sleeper hit as more and more people found their way to this fantastically foolish film. Surely there must be something you can do. I'm doing everything I can. Now stop calling me Shirley. Woe be it to anybody who actually tries to count all the jokes in Airplane, the most exhaustingly funny motion picture ever made. I can't tell. You can tell me I'm a doctor. No, I mean, I'm just not sure. A brutal send-up of the blockbuster disaster movie genre, Airplane takes place on a flight where half the passengers and all of the pilots succumb to deadly food poisoning, forcing a traumatized war vet pilot to overcome his drinking problem. It's not what you think, and get back in the cockpit. But the plot is nothing. The jokes are everything. This woman has to be gotten to a hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. And there are so many different kinds of gags that you'll never catch them all the first time you watch Airplane, or the second time, or the third. Surely you can't be serious. Seriously. And don't call me Shirley. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. Well, what's that then? The British comedy troupe Monty Python travels to the Middle Ages using off-the-wall humor to send up a whole era's worth of ignorance, injustice, and inequity. And I am your king. I didn't know we had a king. I thought we were an autonomous collective. Graham Chapman stars as King Arthur, and all the rest of the Python boys play multiple roles as the cowards, villains, and maniacs he runs into along the way. There are some who call me... Tim? Monty Python and the Holy Grail takes ideas that are objectively not funny, like the airspeed velocity of a swallow, and spins them into timeless comedy gold. And also into... A shrubbery! But if you don't get the President of the United States on that phone, you know what's gonna happen to you? What? You're gonna have to answer to the Coca-Cola company. Comedy can be a pleasant diversion from reality, but the best comedy can change the way we look at reality. Stanley Kubrick, absolutely astounding indictment of Cold War politics, Dr. Strangelove is the latter. It's the saga of how one man's impotence dooms the world to potential nuclear annihilation, and all the other macho schmucks who can barely get over their egos and libidos and warmongering long enough to do the kinda right thing. 
Is this gonna set off the doomsday machine? Jokes like, you can't fight in here, this is the war room. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here, this is the war room! Fly right in the face of the very concept of international relations, and beautifully illustrate just how childish the people who run the world really are, and how dangerous that is to anyone with half a functioning brain. It is not only possible, it is essential. It's unbelievably funny, impossibly smart, and downright important filmmaking. In other words, it's the best comedy ever made.